Hey guys, I'm gonna be getting right into it for you guys today, and hopefully you enjoy the content I'm making. <clears throat> the new set recently just dropped, and your boy's been climbing a little bit. I know it doesn't show you at the top left, but I'm Diamond 30 LP in this video here. So, climbed out of Diamond 4, now we're Diamond 3. We'll be making our way back up to Masters, and then see if I have the motivation to push higher. And one thing I will say that I really like about this set is... I really like the Lee Sin Hero Augment. I think Lee Sin right now is an S tier Hero Augment, and a lot of people aren't playing it because they're playing Poro still or Orin, and I think they're missing out on a lot of free LP right now. As usual, I mute all at the start of the game, and the reason why is because I think Demacia right now with Kale and Fiora is super good. I also think Invoker Reroll is super good right now. So I think those are really two big avenues to go down. There's also, since they reworked the Cannoneers, we're just going to take Trade Sector here, guys, just to get the free shop refreshes, right? So with uh, Cannoneers being changed to Gunners now, and you don't have Ziri, the best option to also go is reroll Jace and reroll um, Jinx with Zaun, right? And another really good comp is the Brawler or Bruiser Cho'Gath with Renekton reroll. And that's super good too right now. So I feel like there's four or five comps you can really play that just abuse having a reroll mechanic in it. And I just, I feel like it's really consistent. Even if you don't hit the KL3, you just keep power leveling. You try to get to level 9 where you can. I think we're in a really good spot right now to just play reroll every game, honestly. So, usually when you play reroll and you're playing the Demacia version, right? Because if you're playing the other versions, you're going to want to follow standard leveling, right? Like if, you, if you're going for like Invoker or you're, if you're going for like Sorks or something like that, you're going to want to go for standard leveling so you can start hitting the Tariks and Karmas and you know the other three stars or other three costs without being stuck on lower tiers. But if you're rocking the Cho'Gath, Renekton, or Demacia version, you're gonna wanna chill these lower tiers and try to lose streak all of stage two if you can, because it's a lot of gold. And also, scouting's kinda OP at the start of the game, guys, when you're rocking Lee Sin. You wanna like look around at the other boards and see what people are playing. I'm not gonna go Demacia reroll if I know there's a whole other dude in the lobby going it. And I won't go, like, bra Brawler, like, Cho'Gath reroll if I know the other guys in the lobby going it, right? So we're always going to want to lose streak so we can get the best items we can for Kale. Which, in my opinion, usually are Rage Blade, and then Hextech Gunblade, and then the game, because you're playing Demacia, would give you the Giant Slayer, right? You're gonna see me here make Econ. I'm gonna sell the Cassidan and the Alawi pair. Because I don't care about them at all, right? We wanna get the Econ bus and we wanna get to where we gotta get going, right? Because one of our biggest power spikes is when we hit level 6 and Kale actually starts getting her waves, right? So, like every so many auto attacks, she throws like an AoE wave. So, that's what we're looking forward to. Also, we want to be able to get the bouncy out onto the board. So we can hold on to the Alawi pair, but if we go to lose here, we're just going to sell. There's no point scouting either. I'm pretty sure we're just the weakest in the lobby, so it doesn't really matter. The thing is that like the poppies and the Alawis aren't going to do any damage, and Kale doesn't do enough damage until she ascends to even kill anything, so... Unless you have somebody inting with Piltover, you don't have to really worry about losing your lose streak. And I was struggling a whole lot at the start of this set, until I just started going reroll every game. And usually you can lose cr to Krugs here, guys. So be conscientious of that. If you are rocking this Demacia reroll, you can lose to Krugs here. Make sure your board's strong enough to actually beat this. And... Here at 55% chance, I don't know if I do it here or not, but I might roll down to like 30 gold, which you usually should to take advantage of the 55% chance for commons, and just start looking to get some upgraded units out onto your board, or at least try to get Kale 3 or Poppy 3. 
or get enough of the Damasi units. I passed up on Galio here a few times just because it's a new set. I'm not very familiar with what the new units look like, so have some grace with me, please. Um, and it feels really bad having to like lose this combat here and then have to buy the coin and draw below 30 interest. But also the cool part about losing guys and letting getting natural XP is I'm basically getting free gold every round. Because we're really struggling to find our pairs, I just took the next uh, tier of Lee and Augment. Now, is Lee Sin's Augments really good for rounding out your comp, right, and getting what you need? Yes. But also, you guys have to think in terms of, if you don't take any combat Augments, you're going to just start losing hard. So my last Augment, no matter what now, has to be a combat Augment, because you already have two Econ Augments. You know, it, it will you will just start losing to mediocre looking boards just because they have more stats. It's not bad losing here because we're still keeping our five streak. And at this point I decide to stop rolling for Kale. I'm hoping with my natural shop refreshes I'll be able to get what I need here. And I'm just gonna start power leveling because I want to get in the Five Demacia, because we're missing out on a unit or an item on our Poppy Three. And this is when you guys gotta know when to hold them or know when to fold them, and know when you gotta quit committing. If we don't hit the kale here, we don't hit the kale. I can't, I can't make Mort Dog, you know, do something in my games. Also, we're starting to get low on HP here, and we see the Fiora, which is really good. So we're gonna go over here and just snag her up. Fiora is a completely busted unit. And I don't care what anybody says, this unit 100 to 0 is anything because it's true damage. And the ability does way too much damage. I don't know why they have her like this. There was a clip of um, a Fiora beating a, what was it? Belveth 3. A Fiora 3 beat Belveth 3. The unit, the unit just right now isn't in a good state in the game. You need some kind of magic shred because your whole board does AP, so you either need Ionic or Polystatic. Ionic is fine. Um, usually you ramp enough to where you don't need it, but it's a little quality of life here. It isn't too bad. So we're just going to hold on to the Quins, and since we have the Nico, we're going to go for like Quin 3. Your win con really for this comp is kind of like Kale 3, Quin 3, because Quin 3 starts doing a whole lot of damage. Although I have my board kind of right sided. I do think the correct positioning is to have your board left-sided. I don't know why, maybe it's because the waves splash and hit more. But I do feel like the board is much stronger when you left-side it. And we're just going to be making the most out of trade sector here for you guys, and I think I'm just going to start dumping levels into the XP bar. Because our next big real power spike is Demacia 7. But something to be conscientious of is everybody usually goes level 7 on 3-5 or 4-1. And so that's our next interval coming up here. So see how everybody's going to be going level 7? We have to start being worried about that now, though. So I don't know if I pump levels out here out of being scared. And I know I want to finish uh, three items on Quinn. Yeah, see, we're getting a little scared. So I know we want to finish three items on Quinn, so we're just going to slam um, Guard Breaker on her and then put the bow on her as well. The reason why I have Sona in the far right is when she casts her ability, it will go through the whole team, and it will also splash onto Kale one hex to her left and be able to give her the give her the attack speed that she needs. And you're gonna see me here. I I have to take a combat augment of some sort. I didn't even mean to take the. Uh, Trinity Force here. I meant to take the Eternal Winter, guys, just to let you know. I just fat fingered and clicked wrong. You should have took Eternal Winter here for Poppy, FYI, just saying. That was a mistake I made. And we're really going to try to mac maximize this Nico on our bench and make the most out of it either going for like Quinn 3, Kale 3. We're gonna we're just gonna try to let our natural shops and trade sector really try to fill out this comp. I think we're very strong. I don't know many people who are gonna hit us for like 38 or nothing. And we're gonna go level eight and then we're just gonna be praying to hit Jarvan and then Fiora too. 
when we go is really dependent upon the lobby. We don't really need to fish for anything else because basically we know we're probably going to hit the Quinn 3. Because we already have 5 out of 9 with the Nico at 6. We sell the Alawi because I think Invoker just goes further with this comp. I think getting the shout out onto the board is a good thing. And now every time we do a trade sector shop refresh, you know, we're really leaving ourselves open to be able to get like some good 2 star 4 costs. I don't think we even get through this guy's front line without Ionic Spark here. What kind of sucks about us all in our gold there, even though we kept our win streak, which is a good thing, is that, uh... We won't be able to probably go level 9 for Kale. And I kept... The, uh, I know they did a patch recently where... Whoever you put the last unit out onto the board gains like... I don't want to say prio, but yeah, prio where they gain prio for the items. And I was trying to get it to where the next item would go on Fiora. Because Fiora with her Sterex gauge is giga busted. But I don't... I want to have Kale having three items and I want to have Poppy having three items. And because we're rolling for Quinn, we might as well roll for another three costs here. So we're going to start rolling for the Sona as well. And thank God we did, because the game naturalized and gave us just a ton off the rip. So I guess I had to take out the Kale there and re-put her back onto the board. That way the, the items go over, so she has three items. Look at how broken Fiora is, man. She just killed two and a half units just by herself out of eight. Yeah, I don't know. I'm losing my mind here trying to get this. Like, you guys are seeing me here. Like, I'm trying to, like, figure it. See, there we go. Then I got the items the way I wanted it to now, just having to Harlem shake them around. I don't think it should be that difficult. Maybe I, I'm using Demacia wrong to be able to juggle the items, but you can get the correct unit items on whoever you want, right? And so now we know we have to roll down big. We only have 21 HP. And we're just not seeing any Kales here, so we're just going to Nako the Sona and get the Sona 3 as well. And now we don't really care about the Kale having an item. We want Quinn to have her Death Blade. We have to start being conscientious now with J4s and Scions because they ulti like your big, your like your largest clump. So you're gonna see me do a little bit of positioning and moving it around here on top of the Demacia. It gives armor magic resist to adjacent like units with stuff. So that's what we're gonna be doing too. Here we're gonna be repositioned to make it a little bit better, and we're gonna be filling out an item on Fiora so that way we can get the last item on Kale. Even though she's only a two star one cost, she actually pumps out a ton of damage. So now we want Sona to be able to hit the um, we want Sona to be able to hit the Quinn here with the attack speed because she really is like all of our damage, right? We're just gonna left side Kale that way she can just get some free ramp and we don't gotta think about her too much. Let's see, we're having a good time now. We're one off. If we really would have held the door, guys, we could have got Kale three here now, as you can see. But we would have got a kill three at stage five six, and we wouldn't have had Sona three. We would still be chilling with Sona on the bench. I don't know what it is, even when Fiora gets nuked, if she has this much healing, I think her ability just like animation cancels her death and she's just usually able to found heal back up.
And since we have another three costs like Sona, we're gonna wanna just put items on her, right? Don't focus so much on like the tank items or whatnot. You wanna you wanna get your higher tier units who are like juiced off the ground a bit. And having her be able to insta cast and give Quinn a ton of attack speed, which allows her to, which allows Quinn to, you know, use her ability is like big. So what's our next big power spike here? We gotta think to ourselves. Our next big power spike is probably going level nine. So Kale can ascend. With Rogue, whenever you proc their passive, they Harlem shake to the back line. So usually you probably wanted to reshuffle up your positioning in the back line here, and make your uh, Sona and your Quinn go on left side. That way they didn't have Rogue's uh, dash to them. And FYI, you guys, you should have just sold the Kale to make gold interest the turn before. And maybe we would have been able to go level 9 a little bit ago. I made a mistake with positioning here. I shouldn't have done this. Having Poppy up front with Gargoyles gives her infinitely more armor and magic resist. And by me putting the other two up, um, we just kind of instantly lost because of it. I wanted, I didn't want um, them to wrap to my back line, but that was a mistake I made. I hope you guys have a good day. I appreciate you watching the videos. Like and subscribe.